I like the way that like you brought up some interesting points. Like the 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 DK two one, I, th I think is 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 true of a like a of a of a phenomenon that I think is kind of get to digging to the heart of my point about supplementation. It's just like there are it's a, it's more than just topping up, right? Like you know taking you need to take not need to but it's more effective if you take k2 with vitamin d right. those relationships right those synergetic relationships are everywhere in nutrition yeah right? like you can have like magnesium supplementation is a pretty much a staple i think you know it's i i'd be hard pressed to think of someone reputable in the health and fitness space uh leaning more towards the conventional medicine side that wouldn't you know, be promoting magnesium use, mm -hmm. but magnesium, calcium and magnesium are ones where like, you can get like false readings of like your body, because these micronutrients and minerals are so important, they will make themselves available by other means. Right. right? So like, this is where, you know, you brought up Merrick and, you know, <clears throat> if you guys haven't definitely get your blood labs done, I think it's MerrickHealth.com slash RX radio. Uh, we'll put the, all that in the show notes. And it's like, if you don't get a full snapshot, you might be, you might not, you might think that you're, oh, my magnesium is fine. It's like, well, your body might be making it fine because you need it. Like there are processes. Like I, I think of a comparison of like, you know, the process of gluconeogenesis. It's like, there is a lot of conversation around carbohydrates in the weight training space. And I think a lot of them, to be honest, is pretty overrated. Because when you do research on carbohydrates and muscular endurance, they're doing actual endurance things. And then people just take like these you know, weight training sports scientists will take these principles and be like, see, you need this for like eight by 10, even 20 reps is not endurance. And your body, thank God, has a process by which it replenishes muscle glycogen without the presence of carbohydrates. Like that's a process that's it's gluconeogenesis is the process by which these things are created by the breakdown of other things. Now, mind you, you might not want the breakdown of other things, but sometimes you might want the breakdown of the other things, say fat, for example, right? So I think the carbohydrate conversation is one of the leading, if I had to subcategorize my prioritization or a potential list of priorities when it comes to maximize because you talked about maximizing performance versus health i would say people are looking to optimize their health and i would say we are looking to maximize performance and there is a distinct difference in the cost benefit ratios that you weigh out in your head and the decisions that you make between the two right mm -hmm. i am not here for a long time friends i am here for a big time that's <laughs> what i want to be here for <laughs> so it's like you know are you optimizing for health or are you maximizing performance because i think those two things are different you want to push like you said far down the right of that tailwind of that of that bell curve so when you start to look at like all right well what are the things that are really going to maximize like you know there's only so much like i'll talk maybe a little bit about my supplement thought process yeah. and get into where I think the, the, the big subcategories are for me. And the first one is vitamin C, mm -hmm. which in the same way that K2 and vitamin D are important, vitamin C helps with the formation of collagen. So if you're consuming a tremendous amount of protein, which I, I I'm bare minimum 300 grams a day, That's which a is like, it's a lot. Now I, you know, you said do something, you might supplement with 50. I will every day supplement with hundred. Yeah. Now there's some sub conversations to protein that I think is important because it, like you talked about with Dwayne and I, I love the way that Dwayne and Phil discuss digestion and absorption because I think there's a difference and I found myself guilty of this a few times. There's a difference between being easy on your stomach and being good for your stomach, right? Being easy on digestion and being good for digestion. And I think a lot of people get those conflated. Right. So I've, I've been playing with beef protein supplements outside of conventional way, but I don't necessarily think it's, you know, to eliminate dairy from your diet is probably not if you are intolerant to it. Now, obviously there can be a, a point of pathology where you are lactose intolerant, but if you are someone like, I, I look at it in a way similar to how I would look at, um, uh, uh gluten. It's like if you are someone who's just electing to do that, you might be signing yourself up for a very, very sensitive problem, 
mm-hmm. right? If you remove this entirely and you actively seek out alternate means and then your body gets exposed to this, you're going to be in a bad way. So like, you know, I do better off beef protein because it's not dairy, right? It's not a dairy byproduct. However, that is more of a me problem with digestion than a digestibility problem with whey protein. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something where, as I do recommend people where they can find good sources of beef protein to maybe try it in the interim of putting out some sort of fire, but reintroducing whey after you've sort of sorted that, I think is super useful. So for me, it, to kind of bring it back to the initial talking point, I take vitamin C, I think about a gram a day okay. because it assistance in collagen formation and it's assistant and obviously that collagen is going to come by way of of protein so in a similar sort of synergistic relationship that k2 and um and d come together protein and vitamin c are not often if ever going to be seen in the same product hopefully we'll be able to change that here in a few months you know spoiler alert but it's i to me it's imperative that those two things run together just for the sheer amount of protein that i have to eat right? I don't want to have to eat more, to be honest, right? I want to begin to maximize what I have to take rather than just pushing the needle to 320, 400, which has actually been shown to be net beneficial if we're looking, if we're talking about maximizing, especially body composition. So I'm not averse to that. It's just difficult. And that's why I take a third of my protein, uh, at most a third of my protein every day from by way of supplement. Because I'm fucking busy. And this is where supplements become elemental. They're not supplemental is because I don't have time to cook another pound of bison, right? right? I'm already cooking a few as it is, and I have shit to do in between. So two meals a day is going to be 50 grams of whey protein per meal. The next thing that I've been taking, and this is like, honestly, this is something that I've been paying attention to coming off my powerlifting career. And you can infer from that where you will. The neuro side of things is really important here. Our job is to use our brains, believe it or not, which is kind of terrifying, which man, when people said, hey, <laughs> as he throws in a liver, <laughs> uh, uh, like, I got my brain right here. <laughs> uh, my brain exists in front of my lower teeth. Yes. Um, so if anyone has taken performance enhancing drugs and is up on the research now, again, maybe I will throw a disclaimer because we do know people who are much more uh, well versed in this than we are. There is some pretty crazy evidence of the neurodegenerative effects of performance enhancing drugs. And you see this in real time by the stupid decisions people make on these drugs. Like certainly your brain is wrong. Your brain is just wrong. But, and you can see there, uh, Jared Feather, who's going to be on the show, works for Renaissance Periodization. Him and Mike Isretel did a podcast episode. They discussed sort of this side of, uh, of performance enhancement. And it's something that, it's funny because it's not just, uh, you know, the neurotransmitters that directly affect cognition. The one in specifically that uh, I concern myself with a decent amount because I don't have a lot of variability in my food. And it's a, it's a tr- I guess you call it a trace mineral. Um, choline, choline is something that like my, when it's weird, my parents used Benadryl as a sleep agent, right? And then I think, so there's a entire list of anticholinergic drugs. So anticholinergic drugs are obviously like inhibit choline and they're way more than you think. And they're probably like, if you, I think allergies, like antihistamines are anticholinergic, if you take like um, Dramamine or motion sickness pills, if you take, um, uh, oh, what else is on there? I like SSRIs, benzodiazepines, like fucking hard drug. People don't really focus on them because they're more serotonin specific, but these are all anticholinergic. And choline is something that you almost consume. Your liver makes a little bit of it, but it's almost consumed directly from food. Or your entirety of the choline in your body comes from food. And that's been one where on the cognitive side, because I grew up in a household that didn't pay attention to choline and acetylcholine and pathways like that. It's like, I've noticed a big difference in supplementing with that because it's not something your body can make. Right. So there's a whole list of like, um, I think it's tyrosine and phenylalanine are precursors to dopamine. So those are, those are two as well that, you know, coming out of a competitive strength sports background for many years and knowing a lot of the research, especially around certain compounds and their, um, their effects on dopamine, like 
uh, this there is a drug in the bodybuilding space that is taken very frequently that is absolutely insane and no one should ever take it's almost like the Voldemort of drugs which you who shall not be named that's like you know you know you're in a bad place when the thing you have to take to combat the effects to quote Roderick Chavez not side effects effects are dopamine agonists when people take trend, the thing they take to stop the trend from doing all the bad trend things is a dopamine agonist where it's like, hold on. No one at no point. No, someone stops and goes, wait a minute. Hold on. All the other ones are just like testosterone, estrogen, testosterone, estrogen. This one is dopamine. And then you start to see like, oh, well, maybe if your dopamine is down, maybe that's going to make you like a little bit of like a sad panda. Maybe you get, maybe you get a little bit angry and it's like, yeah, you, and then you might want to try and offset some of the damage or just like maybe don't take it. So someone fact check me on that. I've been pretty sure, you know, two of the precursors of dopamine or phenylalanine and tyrosine, I think B12 is also in there, also copper. But here's again, here's something that it's a, it's a, it's not like it's a clear picture, right? It's not like it's a direct straight line. It takes a little bit of inquisition to, I think, supplement effectively for your lifestyle and your goals. And so those for me, you know, there's, there's a neurodegenerative side of my like supplementation. Creatine is one that's been a staple, um, yeah. somewhere in the ballpark, five, 10 grams. We actually have coming up on the podcast in a couple of weeks, Scott Forbes, who's a PhD, who's focused his entire PhD research on creatine supplementation. And look, there's also the conversation of, I take choline for the neurological benefits of it and potentially offsetting some of the terrible decisions I've made in my life. Um, at least the physiologically manifested terrible decisions I've made in my life. And, but not to say choline doesn't have, you know, mag like magnesium, for example, has like 400 processes in the body. Some people might take it for sleep. Some people might take it for cognition. Some people might take it for digestion or whatever, but it's like, you're still getting the, you, whatever you're taking it for. It's not like your body goes, Oh, he's only taking it for this. Therefore we're only going to, it's only going to act this way. Right. So for me, the big ones, uh, protein, vitamin C, choline, vitamin D. I think that's it. Magnesium, magnesium. And yeah. then I, then you get into the conversation of like sourcing. 